Remember that petition that I talked about in my last Battlefield 2042 video, which demanded that EA and DICE issue refunds across all platforms for Battlefield 2042, no questions asked, given the disastrous state of the game, both at launch and even months after launch. It had a couple tens of thousands of signatures last time I checked up on it and last time I talked about it, and it has since exploded as more coverage has been going towards it. But before we get to that, let's take a quick peek at what the player base is looking like for Battlefield 2042. Peak 24 hour concurrent players still remaining at less than 4,000, 3,761 as of the recording of this video, which is significantly less than the 5,500 or so that I saw a couple days back. The numbers just keep diminishing at an alarming rate. And if you do the math, divide 3,761 by 100,000. 590 and multiply by 100 you will get a percentage roughly 3.9 ish almost 4% which means that since launch this game has lost a little over 96% of its players which is not very good this shortly after the launch of a live service that's looking deader and deader by the day by the week by the month meanwhile battlefield 5 continues to enjoy a new influx of players from 2042 got sick and tired of that game and just went back to the superior previous game battlefield 5 which is sitting at 31,277 24 hour peak the highest i've seen it in a couple months and battlefield 1 still is enjoying a decent amount of 24 hour peak concurrent players at over 11,000 steam reviews continue to get worse with recent reviews still sitting at overwhelmingly negative at a mere 14 percent it was at 15 percent when i recorded my previous battlefield 2042 video and a few days before that i remember it being at like 19 percent so this has diminished quite a bit and this is a result of not only just launch woes but also all the trouble surrounding the post launch of the game like how the new mode zombie survival was almost immediately pulled after launch because of xp farming oversights how players have been false positively banned for using rgb software how streams for the game have been made awkward by its lack of a scoreboard to keep track of how many kills and in that same stream the game bugged out players got trapped underneath the staircase for the last portion of this stream which rendered them completely disabled from being able to play the game you've got tom henderson who recently posted footage showing the game crashing and during a stream the game crashed like 10 times in a row which obviously isn't a good look all on top of key content delays like season one getting delayed from march to summer or the scoreboard patch getting delayed from february to march and people just finding all this hilarious at this point point. and then on the publisher side of things ea has admitted that battlefield 2042 did not meet sales expectations they have lowered their net bookings predictions surrounding this game which suggests that EA doesn't look at Battlefield as a crucial part of the company's success which obviously is very worrying for fans who are disillusioned at the state of Battlefield and how EA seems to just be killing it off with their missteps and that brings us to the refund petition that I discussed in my last video looking at how this petition has progressed in terms of number of signatures on February 8th Tom Henderson noted how this petition went from 3,700 signatures to over 25,000 signatures after he spotlighted it and then in my previous video that I uploaded you can see right here that as of later in February 8th 2022 that number had reached 37,282 signatures and then the following day on February 9th that number managed to reach over 50,000 signatures which finally brings us to today just two days after my video in which the signatures were sitting at over 37,000 that number has climbed to a whopping 130,356 signatures blowing way past its initial 50,000 goal and 
almost certainly it will reach the new 150,000 signatures target. And how look at refreshes right now, the number is probably going to be significantly higher, 133,186. So it just keeps growing. Now, something that this change.org petition stated was that if this petition reaches over 50,000 signatures, in that case, one of the best class action lawsuit lawyers in the country is willing to take our case against EA. I don't know if this individual had like lawyers lined up who are keeping track of this petition or if enough signatures can just simply draw the attention of lawyers who engage in class action lawsuits but that's definitely one aspect that i didn't place too much stock on these petitions they tend to make a lot of noise and tend to draw a lot of headlines but they seldom actually tend to take corporations to court and lead to tangible results usually these petitions tend to draw a lot of negative attention against whatever is being protested but it doesn't tend to actually on a legal or official level put a company's feet on the fire now this petition did provide an update on that front with a post published just earlier today february 10th 2022 they thank people who signed the petition noting how in just seven days and only one week the petition went from 700 to almost 120,000 supporters now over 130,000 supporters but as far as the class action lawsuit goes the news doesn't look particularly good or encouraging with a post here stating i've recently been made aware that ea's eu la agreement may protect them from any class action lawsuits related to the game's terribly coded architecture. EULA referring to the end user license agreement and fortunately America's consumer protection laws aren't as strong as other countries like say Australia which managed to force Bethesda to give out refunds to those who do request it by a certain day following the disastrous launch of Fallout 76, a broken game that didn't function on the most fundamental level which is exactly the state that Battlefield 20 42 is and even now some people are still struggling for the shooting gameplay mechanic of the game to work properly with hit registration or bullet spread still being out of whack but america's consumer protection laws could enforce xenomax and bethesda to give out refunds for fallout 76 i don't suspect it'll be much different for battlefield 2042 now i have heard some rumblings about stuff going down in brazil where consumer protection laws there might be strong enough that ea might be fined for selling a product that doesn't work as advertised but i still don't know much about that and I'd be curious to see if other countries with stronger consumer protection laws will somehow get on this and ensure that customers get their refunds and that EA suffers some semblance of consequence and then from there the statement argues about why customers deserve better how these companies have engaged nefariously and have taken advantage of unaware customers through false marketing and by rushing a product that was clearly underbaked and said that the argument here isn't regarding consumer expectations of the entertainment quality, but the functional quality. It's one thing to not like a game, but for a game to not function properly. And that's, I think, well stated. For example, it's one thing if I went to watch a movie and I didn't like it versus if the movie didn't work properly. If I didn't like a movie, but I spent money on it, I'd be like, well, you know, yeah, sure. It was kind of a waste of money because I didn't end up liking the movie, but I wouldn't ask for a refund because it has more to do with taste. Whereas if the movie just doesn't work, the frame rate's all choppy, the audio is out of sync in places, the special effects aren't fully implemented, and it was just not a complete product, it was a broken product, then I would absolutely ask for a refund. In a similar vein with Battlefield 2042, it'd be one thing if people just didn't like its direction or didn't like aspects of what the game did from an artistic standpoint but it's a whole other thing when battlefield 2042 just doesn't work on a fundamental level when hell the shooting which is the core of the gameplay of battlefield 2042 is still not working properly and that's just the tip of the iceberg for the myriad issues that battlefield 2042 faces as for alternative solutions if the class action lawsuit is deemed unattainable the petition poster said i plan to get a senator to draft legislation that protects consumers from games requiring a cost to play look good luck with that i don't foresee that going very far i foresee this petering out but if it does go somewhere great 
what makes this petition significant is the pressure that it's applying to EA and DICE, the negative PR that it's bringing to them. It is a way to continue generating buzz surrounding the unacceptable way that this game was marketed, launched, and sold. The cynical way and state in which it was released to prioritize keeping investors happy over giving customers a quality product for their hard-earned money. The post finally concludes with, please keep sharing even though we have reached our target. The more genuine signatures we get, the better chance we have in making a difference in the gaming industry. This petition definitely, I think, is going to keep getting a lot more signatures over the coming few days. But eventually it will peter out and, you know, who knows where it'll go from here on out. But I don't foresee EA capitulating to these demands so long as the law doesn't force them to do anything. They'll be more than happy to keep the money of customers that they didn't really earn, that they scammed customers out of. How rapidly this refund petition has been gaining mass support isn't the only newsworthy occurrence surrounding Battlefield 2042. The game's also facing backlash because of a recent content announcement from six hours ago. This tweet right here you can already see is being ratioed pretty hard with more content comments than likes, over 1,800 comments versus almost 1,600 likes. And basically what they announced was the addition of a new tactical beanie that requires players to complete certain challenges to earn. Unlock the tactical beanie epic headgear for Angel in this week's missions in Battlefield 2042. 30 enemies killed and kills assisted, 100 enemies disrupted with EMP or spotted, 15 intel or wingman uh, ribbons earned. These are the requirements in order to unlock this pretty standard looking beanie. Aside from the fact that this is not a particularly compelling cosmetic, the timing couldn't be worse. The last impression that Battlefield needs to give off is that they're prioritizing cosmetics. And even then, it doesn't look like they're putting that much effort all this time so slow in their content rollout and all we get is this one little freaking beanie. And so scrolling down, comments are pretty scathing. People saying things like, I swear this game is progressively getting worse and worse as time goes by. Barely any major improvements with fixes we got. Just announcements of upcoming big fixes. I'm afraid empty words as everything we'll be getting from DICE regarding Battlefield 2042. This franchise deserves better. We tricked hundreds of thousands of people into buying a game we knew was terrible and underdeveloped, but would you like a tactical beanie? People basically wondering, is this an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Sometimes I can't believe this is real, LMAO. You're freaking joking, right? Right? Oh, uh, we all wish they were. A number of people declaring this to be a dead game. Here's somebody else who posted this meme that's been making the rounds and loving memory of the Battlefield franchise from 2002 to 2021. People still spreading around this uh, petition, the refund petition. You get the idea, but it's not just players who are disappointed at the state of the Battlefield franchise. Former Battlefield developers have also spoken out, as reported here by VG247 in an article whose headline reads, Battlefield 3 and Bad Company 2 lead designer astonished at Battlefield 2042 missteps. This comes from a series of tweets published by David Goldfarb, who formerly worked on Battlefield Back Company 2, Battlefield 3. And he first relayed how much it hurt to watch Battlefield just getting dragged through the mud like this, retweeting Dom, who talked about how Battlefield is no longer the flagship shooter in EA's portfolio. David tweeted, This is profoundly depressing, and as X dies, it hurts to watch. Some days I wonder about the alternate reality in which we make Battlefield Back Company 3, not Battlefield 3. Would love to have had a shot at it. Not that I regret Battlefield 3, but my heart is now in forever bad company and then a few days later he tweeted about how he watched someone's breakdown of battlefield 2042's issues and having not played or watched footage before boy i have some questions about that product so this is an ex-developer who's just baffled at how battlefield 2042 launched in the state that it did really trying to understand why some of these design calls were made why are there no smaller infantry maps why was 128 player count a thing that didn't seemingly have any accommodation for infantry why are whole maps shipping without any detail art was no one in control of quality over there who thought this experience honored the battlefield sandbox experience and took it forward i'm astonished that there were this many missteps even knowing the obstacles from higher up and for all my friends and colleagues over there Ugh, 
thinking about this now, but the best thing for Dice's next would be to make uh, 2143 and go forward in time and reclaim their mantle of combined arms badassery that they built their legacy on alongside a really unique IP they created. For me at least, it's a no-brainer to occupy territory no one else is or can. But yeah, pretty scathing words from a former Battlefield developer who's basically asking the same questions everyone else is. How could this have happened? How could the game have shipped in the state? How could they have made such poor design decisions? He is just as baffled as the rest of the Battlefield community. To wrap things up, I'd like to highlight some issues that what few Battlefield 2042 players remain have been facing, like how the basic function of shooting is still broken with players facing hit registration and or bullet spread that is just not working adequately. And so we get situations where a player will catch an enemy unaware and shoot directly at them, but nothing. A kill that they should have had, that they earned, is absolutely robbed from them. And then here we have some information about how the mass exodus of players and the fact that so few players remain is causing some severe issues in certain regions, like how in South Africa there are so few players that basically, for about the last week or so, the only way to get a game in South Africa is to browse for games in Portal. It's pretty much first come, first serve. There are simply not enough players to fill multiple servers, so the first person to host the server for the night pretty much has full control over the game for the rest of the players in the region. And that can pave the road to issues like this. Unfortunately for some, the person that's been hosting the games the last few nights is a bit thin-skinned and started banning people simply for swearing. He also banned me for calling him out on his power trips. I did not swear and did not even get a warning. I know there's not much anyone of us can do about this, but maybe, just maybe, someone at DICE can see how ridiculous it is that I can't play a game that I paid for just because one other player wills it that way. And things might be even worse in Brazil, where there are so few players that Team Deathmatch tends to be a 1v1 affair with this Reddit user posting, it's been a lot of fun playing Team Deathmatch these days in Brazil, showing a match with only three players, and apparently this match was pretty much a 1v1 almost all the way Way through until someone came in at the very end of the match, hence why you see three players, but most of it was just 1v1. So yeah, in certain regions, Battlefield 2042 is straight up just a dead game, and this is creating a vicious cycle where players are more and more leaving in droves, and that would explain this downwards pattern. You can see right here a significant dip in average concurrent players. It used to reach, you know, the 5500s now it can barely make it past 4,000. It cannot even make it past 4,000 uh, 24 hour peak concurrent players anymore. Whereas again, Battlefield 5 is enjoying very solid numbers. So yeah, with demands for refund gaining mass support, with the introduction of unwelcome content like the tactical beanie developers, former Battlefield developers speaking out about the baffling state of 2042 and the hemorrhaging of players, that 2042 has been experiencing. This has not been a great week for the game, to put it very, very mildly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the latest developments surrounding Battlefield 2042. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on everything, what your prospects are for 2042 and the Battlefield franchise's future. Share your takes in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.